Hello there and welcome. I'm Ole Brugger and if you're new here, I hope I will earn you a subscription today. A month ago, it was my birthday and I really wished for this new tool. The package was delayed in the mail. I just got it here a couple of days ago. This tool is very exciting for me because it means I can work a bit faster when I'm working with wood dowels. I have some walnut wood dowels here or sticks and I will also use it to cut up some of my coffee stir sticks. I'm gonna build a stable today just to test out the tool. A pretty simple build, but first let's see what's in the box. Okay, let's see what's inside. A tiny manual with how to set up the saw. Some accessories, we will have a look at them later. Tools, a screw driver, power supply, power cable, some brackets, and here we have the little saw. Damn, it's so tiny and it's cute. But let's have a closer look on some of the accessories. First, we have the metro gauge. It just slides in here in the slots, so you can adjust some angles. Then we have the bag with all the accessories. A bag full of bits for the rotary tool. Some sandpaper for the disc sander. The flex shaft for the rotary tool. The flex shaft can be mounted here on the side of the saw table. And then we have some polishing discs. I don't know if I'm going to use these polishing discs, but they might come in handy someday. And finally we have the saw blades. There's blades for cutting wood, metal and stone. And here is the back with the final accessories so we can get the saw up and running. First I will attach a saw blade but my fingers are a bit too fat to get in there and mingle with the screw. So I will deattach the top of the table saw instead. And then we can actually see what's going on inside the saw. It's a pretty simple build. There's an electric motor, an attachment for the saw blade, and the two shafts to attach the chuck and the flex shaft. The saw blade is now in and we can reattach the tabletop. And now I can attach the rip vents. This is done by a couple of thumb screws and that makes it just easier to adjust when you're working with the machine. I had to remove the tabletop again since it was a lot easier to mount the flex shaft and the chuck. Finally, I will install the blade guard. But I think this is a bit weird construction of this machine because I can't see what kind of safety this will provide. So I'll probably remove it before I start using the saw. Okay, time to test the machine. Let's make the first cut ever on this machine. It cuts nicely enough. There's a couple of splinters, but we can fix that with the disc sander. Testing the flex shaft with a tiny saw blade. And it works perfectly. I think this will be handy in the future. Okay, enough playing around. Let's do some real work and build something out of wood. I've decided I will build a stable totally out of wood. I will make the roof shingles of wood and the framing and wood trim as well. First, I'm cutting up some walnut wood dowels. These are five by five millimeters. And this saw just chews right through it like butter. It's also very easy to make angles and make the framing fit perfectly together. I will only use super glue for this build just to speed up the process. And of course my beloved activator. Basic framing is done and now we just need to connect all three parts together. 
Cutting up some more walnut dowels, these are 5x3mm, and I will use these to connect the three mainframes together. The tiny curve on a coffee stir stick is perfect for the roof shingle, and I will cut up the ends of a coffee stir stick and use the rest for the sides of the building. But we are gonna need a lot of those. And now I'm very happy that I got this machine, because it takes no time to cut all these up. Some more super glue, and now I can just put in all the sides. There is an angle on the roof, so I will use a side cutter to trim down all the coffee stir sticks I put on the side of the building. Grinding it down so it will be flush with the rest of the build. And now to insert the roof. I will put a full length coffee stir stick on the side, and then we just need to put in all the rest of the roof shingles. To give it a nice finish on the edge of the roof, I will just put a couple of coffee stir sticks to trim it off. We also need a couple of bars in the front of the stable, so we have a place to tie up the harnesses so those horses won't get away. And again, I will snap off the overhang with a side cutter and smooth it out with the rotary tool. Here it is, the build is done. Now for some paint. I will start out with some dark wood speed paint from the army painter just to give it a darker wood tone. I'll do it with my airbrush since it's a lot faster than doing it with an ordinary brush. The speed paint also dries very fast and now it is time to hit it with some of my pan pastels. I will use this burnt umber, some molten green in the bottom and on the roof and then I will hit it with a grey to give it some highlight. To give it a more weathered look I will use some of my green tea. I'll just glue it on with the army painter basing glue with a brush. Sprinkled it on remove the excess and set it to dry. The stables are done. I put in a couple of horses. I 3D printed them last night and uh, gave them some paint today. And I think this build was pretty fast. I only spent one and a half hour building it and I couldn't have done it without this little thing. I still think it's a pretty cute little saw and I can highly recommend you getting one because this will speed up any process working with wood. This is pretty much it for now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you soon.